Cincinnati, Ohio for a long time. Had a great up one more step. Well, I doubt that, but it's still fun, you know. And they had a great, we, I had a great time. I got to know the state so well. And it was a very successful job. I was very young, and that's what gave me maybe confidence. You know, it was confidence. So here we are together. It's just amazing. What a group of people. And by the way, we have thousands of people outside. And a lot of them aren't going to be able to get in. This place is Security, nothing to do with my security, it's the local security. 
convention center security. They took him out. The cameras never moved. I said, show the crowd. The cameras stayed. And just now they stayed. They, stayed. they never moved. They don't do it purposely. I figured maybe they weren't adjustable. Misbehaving badly is one of those things. But I found out those cameras do. They just don't want to move for us. But you know what? We're a silent majority that's no longer silent. Remember. No longer. We're no longer silent. And it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing the love, the enthusiasm when you come to these places. A friend of mine is a very rich guy, very successful. He said, how do you make all these speeches? It's so incredible. You stand up. He said, the guy's worth a tremendous amount of money. Less than me, by the way. No, he's worth a lot of money. He said, how do you make these speeches? And you don't use teleprompters. And I said, you know, you should be allowed to use teleprompters when you're running. You never know what the hell's gonna happen. But, but it's more exciting. But you're also speaking from the heart. She just said it. And a friend of mine said, How do you do that to get before? He said, I wouldn't be able to sleep for a month if I had to speak in front of crowds like we're doing. And you know, you have 10,000, 12,000 people here tonight. You have thousands, thousands outside. Look at them, they're still pouring in. There's no room to pour in. That's the problem. They're watching you through a door. Anyway, you should have gotten here a little bit earlier like these folks. And how do you say we want to get a bigger room? It's a big room, right? You'd have to say, gee, we need larger than You're right. You're right. But so many things have happened. And I said to him, honestly, when you get up to speak in front of these crowds, and I really mean this, there's such love in the room, it's like easy. It's not hard to do. It's easy. We're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. It's not hard. So, the nice thing about doing it also is when you have to have speech writers, you know, all these guys have pollsters. They spend a fortune for pollsters. Some, some spend millions, millions. They give these pollsters all this money. And I always say, if the pollster was so good, why aren't they running, right? They're not good. It's somebody good. I know a lot nice people, they write, and the guy says exactly what? It's just exactly what they say. But they can't think without the pollster. And I said, you know, it just seems like pollsters, that's not so bad. But they pay $100,000 a month. One guy I heard $200,000, $250,000 a month. So what happens is the pollsters are very tough people because they have to prove their domination over our candidate. I don't want a candidate that can be dominated by a pollster. Do we agree? because she doesn't want to hurt her folks. And Jeb, Jeb is afraid to speak. Remember, remember when, he says low energy, huh? There are certain terms that define me. They just get defined. But it is true, you, you know, every three days another poll comes out. Paid for by those guys. Millions, they spend millions. I read all about myself. You got this, you got that. But they love this. But they do say they love him on the economy by far. They love him on leadership by far. They love him on terrorism. They don't like my personality, but that's all because they don't know. Who cares? 
people. That's what the whole thing is. So, when I ran for president, and I announced I jumped out, and it takes courage to do that. I, I was with, you know, the famous escalator with Melania coming down, and I'm coming down. She's waving very elegantly. I'm going like this, like a crazy person. But we're coming down on the escalator in New York City at Trump Tower. But before I did that, I said, man, because you take all of those people and the number of press and everything, you never saw anything like it. It was crazy. And I said to myself, all right, let's go. And I just took a deep breath. You know, you have to do something where you just say, oh, it's not easy. Again, I'm not a politician. I've been a politician now for four and a half months. I'm not a politician. My whole thing was take money, grab it, grab it. I'm a business guy, grab money. I've always been so good at that. Grab it. When things get bad, I hit the banks. I say it was your fault that I get a huge discount. Grab that money. The economy crashes, it doesn't matter. I make it work. I always make it work. So what happens is guys come up to me now because I'm in first place by a lot. By a lot. A few weeks ago, they're saying, well, it's close. Let me tell you, by a lot. We, we all know. I love it. 